Bonjour and good morning everyone. My name is Jen. I'm from Unolive on Provence, Malaysia. So uh, first of all, let me like thank uh, Laureen and as well as the Exabytes team. Uh, also e-commerce fast Asia for giving me this opportunity to actually speak to you here about uh, our business. So um, I'm here to share with you today my journey, which I humbly name it as uh, an olive journey. <laughs> yeah, because it's all about olive oil and uh, olive skincare products. So Un Olive on Provence is actually a French premium skincare brand. And also we use only homegrown ingredients in all of our products. So uh, it means that from plantation and harvest, as well as manufacturing and bottling of the products, everything is done within the farm itself so the farm is located in Provence uh, in south of France so next up a little bit about myself here so yeah I'm um, actually I was actually an engineer a geotechnical engineer if, uh, if you are not so clear about that it's a branch from civil engineering so yep so I used to work in Singapore for about uh, more than five years I would say about five years yeah so uh, so I always call myself a retired engineer who actually uh, stupidly left my like stable job and started a skincare business. But uh, one thing that I'm actually grateful for is that uh, as an engineer, I was trained to actually stay very calm when it comes to problems because um, we actually expect problems like uh, within the engineering industry. So we actually go forward and then identify potential problems and then we remediate it. So this is one of the greatest lessons that I've learned uh, throughout my journey as an engineer. So, and I think it's, it has been very, very useful uh, for me when I run my own business now. So yeah, shout out to all the engineers out there. If you think that um, teaching your um, nine to five job is stupid, but um, think it in the other way so the experience the mindset that you have uh, collected might still be useful when you move somewhere else so it, oh this is not working so yeah so a bit of history about my company so uh, back to 2016 when I was still in Singapore so we were actually introduced by our family friend about Un Olive on Provence so uh, we didn't think of it like as a business uh, we just uh, we took it like a like friends sharing with us some good stuff so we bought like a few of the samples from France and then we shared it with our friends our family friends and surprisingly some of our friends came back and say uh, can I have it more can you uh, buy more for me can you help us to buy so we thought oh yes so uh, I think it's worth actually bringing in this brand because uh, all our formulations are actually sensitive skin friendly. So we, after like a few rounds of negotiations with the brand owners in France, so uh, in year 2017, finally we have decided to actually bring in the brand from France into Malaysia. So uh, in 2017, if not mistaken, it's early March, we actually started our online store. So um, I've actually seen, like I've actually been asked many times and said like, um, being an ex-engineer, you didn't have any like branding experience or you didn't have any like e-commerce tech savvy type of experience like how did you started your online store i would say uh you just have to reach out for helps because there are a lot of resources there are a lot of very well resourced platform like easy store because we are a merchant of easy store uh you just have to reach out to the right people to the right platform and you will definitely get the answers to all your difficulties or all your questions that's the advice i've been giving to uh, my friends who actually wanted to start their own e-commerce business but feel a bit like uh, feel a bit of the obstacles and dare not to proceed. So at the same year, actually, we uh, we opened our first uh, physical boutique stores. And it's a bit interesting, like the story is a bit interesting because uh, uh, the Sunway Group, 
uh, summary group, one of our customers actually uh, one day sent us a PM, a private message asking that, uh, would you be interested to actually have a store in uh, one of our malls? Then we thought, hey, how did you find out about us? So she said that she has been a customer. She bought uh, our products online. So uh, for her diabetes, uh, that her dad has diabetes. Uh, when you have diabetes, you know that the skin condition can be really bad and then it makes the absorption of the medicine to be really um, bad as well. So uh, she has used our products uh, on her dad's uh, skin and she found to be very good. So she thought, why not uh, you all come and the summary group will help. So uh, this is how we actually started our first store in Summer Velocity Mall. We did not actually, uh, we did not exactly plan for it, but chances came to us. Uh, but at that time, we actually, um, look through all the options and we thought yes maybe for a price point like ours um, a physical boutique store could benefit uh, it could actually help to complement our e-commerce uh, uh, website as well because um, it's the shopping behavior where customers we have, we have received a lot of questions about uh, where can I try your products so uh, they, they dare not to actually commit that sum of money because our products are slightly at the Mastich site which is the mass uh, prestige site so uh, some customers would prefer that they can try physically first so we thought yes maybe boutique store can be an option uh, for our business so the following year i'm not too sure why it's not showing here it's supposed to say uh 2018 so the following year we actually uh opened our second store in one otama and then uh in 2019 we started actually uh venturing into marketplaces so we launched our flagship store on lazada last mall so lazada last mall is a platform where only authorized resellers or brand owners can actually have their flagship store status on so uh as you can see throughout this year um 2020 is not included because we are still surviving so yeah so it's not his part of the history yet uh even though i really wanted to pass very quickly so yeah as you can see throughout these few years uh since we started our business uh we have been swimming across online and offline quite a lot so so it's not our our business models are rather in a hybrid way so we try to make the both worlds work and complement each other so next it's about our challenges so this is the very famous o to o type of uh, challenges as you can see so um the both o's can be very different in my opinion and they can be very similar as well so uh this is what makes it a bit really like challenging it's really hard to be tackled you see so uh i've listed out here for you uh, the very typical funnels, the very typical, like in marketing jargons, we call it funnels, like from brand awareness to uh, sales conversion to finally customer retention. So you can see actually the objectives of both online and offline businesses, they are about the same. So uh, the challenging part is that the executions would never be the same because how your customers respond to both e-commerce and offline platforms, it's very, very different. But of course, uh, carefully you actually strategize your like strategies. You strategize your plans and all. You can actually tackle it, and then it can the both platforms can help to complement each other. I'm going to show you some like examples that we have actually um, been through uh, that we are actually still going through now. So first up, it's uh, brand awareness. So uh, as a consumer, we would know brand awareness for both uh, physical stores and online e-commerce platforms can be quite different. Uh, how, how, how do I elaborate it, you see? So if it's an online, uh, if it's an offline boutique, offline physical store, uh, normally you just have to stand out from the sea of shops within the shopping mall. It's rather confined, I would say, because you are limited by distance for physical stores. So uh, businesses will try to put on some great sales, 
very very nice and delicate shop this place and also you start giving a leaflet so these are the methods that it's um, conventionally used for uh, offline boutique stores to actually increase brand awareness meanwhile while we shift to online uh in my opinion it's not so much about um uh, your competitors, like stand out among your competitors. I'm not too sure about you guys, but I think most of the e-commerce, um, the e-commerce um, business owners will actually agree with me. One of the greatest competitor for online e-commerce platform is actually the algorithm. <laughs> you get what I mean? Because you often have very good products. You have written a very good post and also uh, you have taken some very good photos. You posted it on your social media platform. You posted it uh, on your Instagram, Facebook, or and any other platforms that you can think of. But it's just not reaching enough of the audiences. So it, it's not reaching enough and it might not reach the correct audience. So uh, then the brick and mortar stores can actually come in to help. So Sorry, other than uh, Facebook ads or Instagram ads that you can think of, the offline stores can actually help to uh, complement this in a way where you can run campaigns like uh, you encourage your customers to come and check in to your location, take a photo, share with their friends on social media platforms. And that way, it's a very, it's an, a very organic way to actually grow your um, target reach. Yeah, so uh, it's it, you just have to do like a bit of like um, tactics here and there. So you can make use of your offline boutique stores to actually feed target audiences onto your online store. So this is what we mean by it works like to complement each other other than spending um, big monies on Facebook targeted ads and all. Uh, I'm not saying that um, the social media advertisements are bad, but just that uh, it's another area of expertise, I would say. So if it's used right, it's very good. But if it's used wrongly, you, you could be burning money. So um, if like uh, here we have like businesses who are having offline stores as well. So I strongly, strongly recommend you to actually make use of your physical boutiques to help to leverage and help to actually feed the brand awareness onto your online platforms as well. So next we have customer service. Uh, oh yeah, so next we have customer service. So I have to, uh, we all have to admit that throughout these few years, there's a shift in uh, shopping behaviors. So how often that we ourselves, when we shop, we we'll discover when we shop physically, we discover this brand. So the first thing that you do is not exactly talking to the salesperson, but the first thing that you do, you actually take out your phone and then you start Googling, start searching about it. So this is a very significant behavior change um, throughout these years, I would say. I think uh, most of you would actually agree with me it's because we ourselves as a consumer, we do that all the time. So, uh, and also there are chances where people come to your offline store uh, after consultation and then they decided to do more homeworks online first. So the thing is that if imagine you do not have an e-commerce platform, you do not have an uh, online store or uh, at least at the very least your own website, so you are losing out on customers. So in this case, off online can actually work as a safety net for your offline stores so you don't lose out that that much the reason why we are calling this a funnel is because after every event after every stage you tend to lose out some customers so uh, in in terms of this customer service uh, it means that the event before they make purchases online can actually act as a safety net for your offline boutique stores as well so that you try to track as much customer as possible. You try to feed them more information before they even ask you. And, and of course, um, and of course, the other way around is that uh, in terms of customer service, we have been trying to actually bring the same level of like warmth in our customer service to our online uh, platforms. So, 
uh, you have to admit also lah, because uh, we are all humans, we are still very much touched by uh, face to face interaction, uh, physical interaction sort of thing. Uh, this is why even now online we have live sessions uh, selling various products because um, us humans, we just need to see something physically. Uh, actually, be, uh, be it physically, real physically, or on virtually on a virtual platform. So, uh, this has been our challenge as, as well because uh, when we started, we realized that uh, actually offline store was more straightforward. Customers came into your shop and then we give some consultation and then they make purchase uh, all like right after. So the parties involved is only us and the customer. So uh, when it comes to online, it's quite different. So one thing is that when when customers come to shop online they shop on their own if they have questions they will approach you so you try your very best to impress them if they do not have any question so they will be shopping on their own and then when they place their order it involves some third party like fulfillment centers as well as uh, your delivery partners so uh, when more parties are involved uh, you are more prompted to uh, misunderstandings and problems especially uh, I'm not too sure if there are any e-commerce business owners out here. So uh, you will realize that during the MCO period, you had a lot of delivery issues to solve. So these are the problems, the different customer service problems, which is very significantly very different from what we have been doing offline. So online, uh, you have a total different set of SOPs to follow for customer service. So uh, in my opinion, it's very worth investing to actually raise the levels of your customer service online as well. Well, yeah, if you want to make use of your online e-commerce platform as a safety net, so it's very worth to actually really sit down and think how can I provide even better quality of customer service to your customers if you are so used to offline uh, customer service already. So next is about sales conversion. Um, of course, having an e-commerce platform is like having a mobile outlet. So your coverage is uh, anywhere that can be accessed uh, to your websites, you see. So yeah, so the higher chance to get sales conversion uh, online, it's, it's of course higher compared to your brick and mortar outlet stores. And also currently, I think due to the MCO or if it's not due to the MCO, it will still get vibrant. We have very vibrant marketplaces like resources available now in Malaysia. We have a lot of outstanding like marketplaces like Lazada, Zalora and Shopee. Uh, we have launched our Lazada last mall in 2019. And this year, we are planning to actually launch in Shopee, Shop, Shopee Mall, as well as Zalora flagship. So yeah, so one of the main questions that we often get from our um, colleagues or our friends, our business friends, is that uh, if you are selling on so many platforms, will, won't it be very messy for you to handle? Or uh, how customers will actually perceive how customers will actually look at their, they, 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 uh, there's a chance that they will, uh, likely, they will likely feel that eh, um, the brand is so messy, it's available everywhere, it's not exclusive at all. So um, uh, I have to admit that before 2019, uh, me too, I used to have that same kind of mindset. But after uh, us venturing into Lazada last more, I can actually tell you that uh, it's not exactly how you thought uh, how I thought that. So, because uh, we soon realized that because uh, having your own e-commerce platform, you take it this way, you have like um, two physical boutique stores. I have like two physical boutique stores and we have our own web store. So there are three branches of your uh, store. So we have another one on Lazada. So it acts like a four different branches of stores because you know each and every of them are targeting different audiences. So uh, if you observe enough, you realize that Lazada, Shopee, as well as uh, Zara and etc. All of them, they have their different strengths. 
they have different strengths targeted different audiences. Of course, there are overlaps also. But uh, I think as long as if you study your own brand enough, and if you study your, if you plan your execution well enough, uh, these platforms can be used for, uh, to complement your businesses as well, especially during the MCO period where offline physical boutiques is uh, totally shut down. So these platforms came in very, very convenient for both consumers and as well as business owners. You just have to admit that they have the resources, um, they have the capability to actually reach out to different groups of uh, customers. So about sales conversion, the same thing is that I would say increase your coverage by using online uh, e-commerce platforms, like how conventional business will actually plan for opening more outlets to cover more areas. Think of it that way, expanding into different e-commerce platforms is also reaching out to different um, groups and different areas of your customers. Uh, it's a very big potential, I will say. Yeah. So next up is the uh, customer retention, which makes a very huge part of uh, our business here in Own Olive on Province because we, we sell skincare, we of course expect customers to actually come back to us. Uh, so about customer retention, so I would say that uh, many of the brands actually stopped doing it the conventional way already, if you realize, because uh, 10 years ago, if you ever shop for a skincare brands, especially premium skincare brands, uh, you will start filling in your details and then by uh, monthly, almost monthly, you will receive like mails or postcards uh, regarding the new products or samples and stuff like that. Uh, this uh, this was the very conventional way of actually doing uh, like customer retention to, to actually uh, attract customers to come back to shop for more. The, then uh, then you start to think, what if customers moved? What if customers miss your meals? So the engagement rate it's really not. Uh, as good as uh, how the online platforms will be able to use it. So I know many of the businesses now currently are actually using your uh, SMS system where you send SMS weekly or monthly to your customers telling them that, oh, we, I have this and this promotion currently. So um, do come back to visit us. So comparing this, if you are sending, yeah, SMS platform is also very good. So comparing this, if you're using a string of just plain text, and also you may actually include in another message a link to your website with attractive visuals. So which one do you think that will actually be more engaging to your customers, to your existing customers? It's of course something which is more uh, visualized. So, so if you do not have a website, it's very unlikely you will be able to do that. Uh, or it better if you have a web store, you can directly link them to the whatever promotion that it's ongoing now. So uh, they can actually directly study about your promotion and even make purchases without you having to wait for them to return to your physical outlet. So it works both ways, like from offline, you attract some customers, but online you can make use of the tools available to actually re retain your customers. So this is how, what we mean by the uh, complementary effect of the both models, like the hybrid models of the both uh, O2O thing. So yes. Okay, so another thing is that the big um, challenge that we have now, okay, sorry, yeah, so sorry. Another thing is the big challenge that we have now, which is the MCO. So, um, MCO, okay, sorry, yeah, <sighs> okay. So the MCO kicks in in March 18, but uh, we actually were alert of its impact way before that. So uh, I remember it was early February. So the team and I actually sat down and see, um, we actually forecasted something uh, disrupt disruptive would happen in Malaysia soon because you see the trend in China and in uh, Italy and in Korea. So uh, we can see, we can definitely see signs of the uh, supply chain, the global supply chain to be disrupted. So the first 
the first measure that we have taken is that we increase and expand our inventory. So this, this was something that uh, I myself was actually quite proud of. Uh, we have made the decision because um, during the MCO, if you observe around, there are many, many customers. Uh, there are many, many uh, like e-commerce sellers who ran out of stocks and they couldn't actually uh, ship their goods like normally so this was what we have done uh, first uh, expand our our inventories to ensure that we have enough stocks to sell so the next thing before mco we actually gave our staff training because actually as early as um february you can see there's this very uh you can see the crowd in malls are going down it's, it wasn't um uh that that crowded compared to the previous year, especially during the Chinese New Year period. So we gave, we actually gave our staff um, trainings on how do they actually handle online orders. Uh, the thing about this is that we realized many other businesses actually separated their operations of offline and online. So uh, having said that, practically, if you enter this uh, physical store, if you inquire something about their online promotion or online web stores, most of the outlet staff wouldn't be able to answer actually. So you can see the operations are totally separated. So um, before MCO, we actually gave our staff, our outlet staff training on how do they handle how do they handle the online um, orders because we want to make use of our physical stores to actually support our online orders but that was before mco so um we actually launched like shop online and pick up in store initiative um this is very important because uh, we want to let our customers, uh, especially our assisting customers, know that you can actually save time. You wouldn't have to hang out a lot, like for very long in our store to get your uh, products replenished. So you can shop, you can shop online, and then we will actually pack it, and it will be available to uh, to be collected at designated like time slots. And also, we do drive-through delivery as well, where we bring our uh, orders to the nearest um, entrances of the mall so it's basically providing convenience to our in-store customers by using our e-commerce platforms so we also provide free delivery that was to actually encourage our existing customer especially uh, a very big group of our customers are from the uh, above 45 years old group. So uh, shopping online may not be a norm for them before the MCO. So to actually encourage it to happen, we actually provide free delivery services to our um, assisting customers. In fact, it was uh, free delivery throughout the whole MCO period as well. So we want to encourage people to start uh, shopping online. So next up is the express delivery option. Um, before and after MCO, we are we now currently we are still having this, uh, where we make use of both of our stores as a dispatch center. So uh, we have our summer velocity mall shop uh, covering the KL area, as well as this um, uh, one Utama outlet covering PJ area. So uh, if uh, our customers stay within like ten kilometers vicinity of our shop. Uh, we do give a complimentary express delivery. Uh, we use platforms like uh, Lala Move, Grab Express, and Mr. Speedy. So it's totally free for our customers if we purchase like a certain amount uh, with, uh, with one order. So if it's uh, out of the 10 kilometers coverage, we actually um, we will actually quote give a quotation to our customers and tell if you would like to opt for express delivery how much in extra you have to pay so these measures are very important is that uh, we have to admit that there are still a very significant group of people especially those above 50 or 45 years old i would say that they are still not too used to online shopping yet so we are trying our best to actually make use of online e-commerce tools to actually um, giving like a hybrid model for them to choose from. They can choose, they can choose to shop online, but we delivered it physically to them. So they wouldn't have to wait for three to five days. They get it instantly, like within an hour or so. So this one is what we are still running currently. So, and then the last one, 
sorry, yeah. And then the last one will be WhatsApp order. This one, I'm really more than thankful that uh, e Easy Store actually launched this, I think, at the very end of uh, MCO phase, the MCO phase before CMCO. It came out to be very handy, especially for business like mine. Uh, Unolive, as I said earlier, a very big group of our customers are actually above 45. So uh, leaving them to shop on their own on our website, the chances of losing them out is very high because uh, one thing is that they are not so familiar about how do they navigate across a website or so. So um, this feature, it's really, really, really very good. So uh, this WhatsApp orders is that um, you can create a link Customers can inquire via WhatsApp. Like let's say, uh, I would like shower gel, I would like blah, 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 blah. So you can actually finalize it. You can actually create a link that contains all the products that they want. And then you send the link to your customer. The customer can just click into it and they do not have to add to cart on their own. So they can actually finalize and their orders and then make payments just like within like a few clicks. It's very, very handy because uh, you don't let your customers to shop on their own uh, like for a very long time because uh, it's a very high, there's a very high chance you will lose out on the customers actually as well. Yeah, so, yep. Let me check. Okay, so next. Uh, it, Jen, just, just to let you know, we are running a little bit short on time and I'm going to have to need you to wrap it up soon because we do have some questions uh, for you to answer in just a bit. Oh, wow. Okay, yes. <laughs> the the <laughs> last slide now. <laughs> okay, um, right. so I'll give you a couple of minutes more and I'll be back to help you with your Q&A. All right, thank you. Thank you. So our future plans is, of course, uh, to survive. So uh, we... We have been a loan free company, so survival is always in our blood. So this year we just plan to survive through. Um, and then uh, we also work together with our French, uh, French uh, brand owners to actually discover a series of new products that are suited for the Asia market, as well as we have plans. In fact, these plans came before the MCO. So we have the e commerce market expansion plans where we plan to actually market our products to other ASEAN countries as well yeah so so I'm running out of time yeah so sharing with you guys uh, my favorite quote that has uh, motivated me so much throughout this journey what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and that's verified by me it's true really so I have my contacts here so uh, if you would like to connect or if you would like to collaborate in any way so let me know you can contact me or you can actually send us a PM as well yep I'm done Sorry for okay. running. <laughs> oh, you're, you're fine. You're fine. We, we, we can still uh, squeeze this in. But to everyone who's watching, let's give her a virtual round of applause first. Thank you so much, Jen. Now, let's go to your Q&A here. We have a few questions. This first one is from Chris. Uh, Chris would like to know, would you mind sharing how much capital is needed to bring in a new brand and also how to successfully convince the brand to let you bring them in? Um, for this, I am actually grateful that we were actually quite lucky because um, the brand owners themselves, they are from France, uh, south of France, which is a rather remote uh, area uh, if you compare to the very gen general France, Paris type of like uh, Parisians. So they are very open to any opportunities. So they are very friendly. So uh, we did not actually uh, invested a very huge capital into it. So um, we, what we we try to do is that we communicate in everywhere we can with the founders, with the brand owners, and then we actually came out, established a very uh, sustainable business plan for both the uh, brand owners as well as for us who is in Malaysia. Mm. All right, super. Our next one is from Edwin. Now Edwin says, Jen, how do you use and capitalize on algorithm to reach your target market in social media? In social media, how do you use and capitalize on algorithm to reach your uh, Of course, we actually make use of both uh, online and offline. So, uh, of course, uh, we have our like uh, loyalty program where we actually get information of our existing customers. So when you have the baseline data, when you have the base data, it's it's much easier for you to start an online or social media campaign like uh, paid ads as well as um, 
you will actually you can actually study about even for influencer marketing you see so uh you you'll be able to study like what sort of people are influencing my group of targeted customers so from there there are a lot that you can do as well as you know the ways to actually collect your base data and then you make use to make use of it to expand that data all right our next one is from jie ji Oh, it's all in caps. <laughs> hi, panelists. I feel like she'll be like, "Read this really loud." Okay, but hi, <laughs> panelists. Can I ask for a suggestion? Is it better to use COD and postage, or use postage only? Um, I would say, uh, if you have, cause always stand. This this thing is that is always stand at the front of your businesses. I wouldn't say COD is bad, but because there are still a lot of businesses running on COD on um, model, so I wouldn't say postage is the best way as well. Because there are also um many other products, especially like let's say the FMB postage. It's a bit tricky to handle. So always stand at the front line of your 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 business. Listen to your customers. So if they need COD, of course you have to work something out to actually cater to the customers' needs as well. So we like for me myself, we have actually tried COD. Um, a very small group, a very minor group of our customers actually prefer COD. So we still have the COD option available now. But I will say, uh, the mass market is actually asking for postage. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. All right. That's good to know. So our next question is from Farhan. Now Farhan uh, is saying, "Hi, Jen. This is actually a two-part question. One on sales conversion from your point of view, which channel has the highest and lowest conversion rate, and what's the average percentage for your business?" Uh, the second question is on consumer retention. Can you advise on how you attract the customers to increase the traffic? Uh, first of all, sales conversion. I think if you are comparing between the online and offline, uh, currently for our for Unolif on Provence Malaysia, our online sales actually contribute to about sixty percent of our total uh, like uh, sales income. So another forty percent, but this is uh the data before MCO. So after MCO, you will probably see ninety percent, ten percent. You see, so yeah. So I hope that answer your questions. So uh, online definitely has a bigger, larger potential for us because uh even our offline stores are actually. Um, tailored to actually complement to our online store. So by right, our online stores should perform better than our offline. So yeah, that is what uh, forecasted. And next is the customer retention. How do we attract the customer to increase the traffic? This is a very tricky part because what we have done is that we give very very good customer service. In fact, uh, we we are actually we have actually exchange policy, refund policy as well, so that even when customers when we actually started the refund policy what we have in mind is that we want customers who find our products to be not so suitable for them to come back to us as well so there's a chance that we will be able to actually retain that group of customers as well. so if you track product a you found it to be not so suitable maybe you can come back to us we will actually recommend you product b so in that way that's a way to actually do customer retention as well so of course through very good uh, customer service and also word of mouth we haven't been spending a lot on our uh, social media ads we we do have a budget for it but it's not so much but we tend to shift our focus to giving like really good customer service so that our customers will actually speak for us yeah so word of mouth it's more powerful than any other ads now, I just want to add on to that also talking about your exchange policy. I do feel that that's a very important thing when it comes to business because when you give people that leeway to experiment with your products and you don't tie them down completely, I think that makes people feel a lot more comfortable with your brand. Wouldn't you agree to that as well? Yes, yes, definitely. All right. Now, Farhan, I hope that answers your question. Um, I think we have time for one or two more. Let's see how this goes. Our next one is from Helen. Now, Helen is asking, from your experience, is the subscribe web store or standard template uh, meeting your requirements or is a customized one more suitable? Um, I would say like me, I'm, a, I'm an easy store merchant. It's, it's a subscribe web store, but it's customizable. So like for me, who is not so tech savvy, uh, I, I obviously do not have any um, experience in graphic designs and, or web designs and all. So I subscribe onto 
a website, uh, a web store platform like Easy Store, and it's customizable. It's so convenient that it's basically just drag and drop. So, uh, you have to actually move around with the like the space between. Uh, what is customizable and as well as what's your requirement. So as long as you work around with these things, I don't think your website will be too bad. Lah. <laughs> you get what I mean? And also, of course, uh, do keep trying to uh, improve your website. So it's very unlikely you get it done right at the very first trial. So what we do is that we have to actually revamp our websites every two weeks, actually. We, we actually need to fix something every month or every two weeks or so. Absolutely. I think that's very good advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's do one more. Oh, it's 10.30, but let's do one more. Okay, this one comes from uh, Dialini and she's like, uh, she would like to know, how did you manage to approach them, especially from foreign countries? I think she's asking about how you managed to uh, approach this brand. Uh, the brand owners is actually, we actually, we, we actually, the Taiwan, the, it's a bit of the story. The Taiwanese uh, distributor is actually a family friend of ours. So they actually brought the brand into Taiwan and they uh, actually sold the products to us. They, uh, at first, she didn't think that uh, we would actually become a distributor on our own as well. She thought just why not she want to share with us this product. So we have tried them. Uh, it's really good. And then we, the, we came back, we went back to approach the French uh, brand owners on possibilities of um, bringing the brand into Malaysia. So yeah, it's very, it's like you always reach out. So if you think this is a potential product, don't feel shy, just reach out to the brand owners, just write to them, you like their products and who knows, it might be the, the start of your like business journey. Exactly. I think it's important to have that mindset where you just need to go forth and conquer. It makes all the difference. Yes, um, yes. But uh, Jen, I'm going to have to let you go now. We are sadly out of time, but uh, thank you so much for joining us. And we still have some questions which are unanswered yet. So if you could do that offline, that would be great. But to yes, everyone who is watching, if you need to contact Jen, here are her contact details on screen. Um, Jen, thank you so much for your very detailed and uh, intricate presentation. It was lovely to listen to you. And thank you so much for being a part of e-commerce oh. 2020. Um, Thanks, Laureen. You're more than welcome. And uh, do stay on to watch the rest of the presentations. We have another one coming up in just a bit. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Laureen. Thanks, Exobytes. Bye. Bye. Exobytes. Grow your business online.